Um, today we are going to be looking at uh, using the discriminant to determine the number and types of roots a quadratic equation has. We've probably even already made reference to this. We've talked about the discriminant. Let's get settled. Come on, guys. We have talked about the discriminant. I've mentioned it some. I know I've had some conversations on an individual level with some of you about the discriminant. Um, but here are some important facts. This is lesson 113. Important concept. Recall that the quadratic formula for a quadratic equation of the form ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0 is x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. That's right. In the formula, the expression under the radical sign b squared minus 4ac is called the discriminant. That's what it's called. Now, that expression determines a lot, right? Think about what happens with that expression. What happens to that expression? We've already discovered what happens to that expression if we get a negative sign underneath the radical, right? What, what does that mean? It tells us we have no real solutions. We're going to have two imaginary solutions, which we haven't really talked about how to find. We'll save that for Algebra 2. But the two imaginary solutions, if b squared minus 4ac is negative, okay? Uh, if b squared minus 4ac is positive, then we taking the square root of a positive number, that's going to give us what? Either a, either that's going to give us two real numbers, right? Sometimes if b squared minus 4ac is a perfect square, we get really pretty numbers. We call them rational numbers. If b squared minus 4ac is not a perfect square, if it's a positive non-square, then we end up getting irrational numbers. Okay? Ugly numbers. So, the discriminant tells us lots of things about it, all right? The value of the discriminant term determines whether the equation has rational, irrational, or imaginary solutions, okay? And it also determines how many solutions that we have, and we'll look at that in just a second. So the value of the discriminant, the value of b squared minus 4ac, determines whether the equation has rational, irrational, or imaginary solutions. So sometimes, and I've, I've seen this on ACT, determine how many solutions and what kind. Right? They're asking you to use the discriminant to determine if it has imaginary, rational, real, uh, or irrational solutions. Right. So that's the kind of the choices. Let's look at some things here. So b squared minus 4ac is negative. We've already said that means that there are no real solutions, and that means the parabola represented by that equation has no x-intercepts, no zeros, no solutions, no roots, no real roots. The x-axis in the xy plane is the real axis, and so if it has no real solutions, that means it has no x-intercepts. If b squared minus 4ac is equal to zero, think about what happens if this part is equal to zero. What disappears? The square. plus or minus, right? So I no longer have a plus or minus. All I'm left with is negative b over 2a, which means I'm only going to have one solution. So if b squared minus 4ac is equal to 0, there's one rational solution, real solution. It's not necessarily rational unless we quantify that a, b, and c have to be rational numbers. We could have irrational coefficients, in which case that uh, kind of goes away. But... If b squared minus 4ac is positive, then we can take the square root or at least approximate the square root, and we're going to have two real solutions and therefore two x-intercepts. So the value of the discriminant tells us a whole lot about the parabola and its x-intercepts, its roots, its zeros, its solutions, okay? Um, so use the discriminant to find the number of real solutions to this equation then state the number of x-intercepts of the graph of the related function. Now, is this telling us to find the x-intercepts? No. It's not. What is it telling us to do? To find how many solutions. Find how many solutions 
right? Number of real solutions. The number of real solutions is the same as the number of x intercepts, right? So we're going to use the discriminant, which is b squared minus 4ac. There's no square root in the discriminant. The discriminant is just the part that's inside the radical. Make those substitutions. What do we get? Negative 3 squared minus 4 times 1 times 9. That's positive 9 minus 36, which is negative, negative right? I don't even really need to know what it is. It's negative. It's less than zero. What does that tell us about this? It has no real solutions, and therefore it has no x-intercepts, right? It's the graph is above the x-axis. How do I know it's above the x-axis? Because the, x, the a value is positive, which means it opens up. Okay. All right. <clears throat> Let's have a look at another one. 2x squared minus 3x minus 4. I'm going to use the discriminant, which is the best way to learn a formula, guys, is to write it every time you use it b squared minus 4ac. So that is going to equal, let's see, b is negative 3 squared minus 4 times 2 times negative 4. That's 9 Plus 32? Yes? I got nine minus two C is negative, so negative 4 times A times negative 4. Yeah, so there's two negatives there, which means it's going to be positive. So that's greater than 0. What does that tell us? It has two real solutions, two x intercepts. Because this is 41, the square root of 41 is going to stick around, isn't it? Because we can't simplify it. We can't make it a rational number. We could even go so far as to say it has two irrational solutions. All right? not, not easy. And here's one other little tidbit. This irrational discriminant tells us that this is not factorable. Right? Because if we could factor it, we're going to get answers like two-thirds, one-half, four. You know, if you can factor it and solve, set each factor equal to zero, you get nice, rational, good number answers. But if you have the square root of 41 in your solution, the problem is not factorable. So that's another use of the discriminant. <coughs> if the discriminant is a perfect square, then it can be factored. If the discriminant is not a perfect square, it can't be factored. Okay, so just kind of keep that in mind, file it away. It might be useful for you someday. Uh, do this one on your own. Tell me what you come up with. Say that again, George. Do what? You got it. I don't got it yet. Did he just say, hold on now, 4 times 16, not 54? Okay, so b squared minus 4ac here would give us what? Zero. That's correct. 8 squared is 64. 4 times 1 times 16 is also 64. 64 minus 64 is 0. What does that tell us? One real solution. Right? It also tells us that it is a perfect square trinomial. Right? 
What's the factorization of x squared plus 8x plus 16? x plus 4 times x plus 4. Right? We already noted that if we have a perfect square trinomial, it's going to have 1, 0. Right? b squared minus 4ac equals 0 tells us that we only have 1, 0. So it's, it also tells us that the quadratic is a perfect square. Okay? Um, last one. A baseball is thrown in the air with an initial velocity of 20 feet per second from 5 feet off the ground. Use the equation h equals negative 16t squared plus 20t plus 5 to model the situation. Will the ball reach a height of 30 feet? Okay, so what we're really asking here, guys, is, y'all listen, will the ball reach a height of 30 feet? So, does this... have a solution. Right? Do y'all see that? Yeah. It's not asking us what the solution is. It's asking us if it has one. All right? How would we determine that? Subtract 30 from both sides. Why am I subtracting 30 from both sides? Because the quadratic formula and its parts, the discriminant being one of the parts of the quadratic formula, only work if the quadratic expression is in standard form equal to zero. All right, so I will do 20 squared minus 4 times A times C. That's 400 minus 1,600. Now I got three negatives. Negative times negative times negative is pa is uh, is negative. So that's negative twelve hundred, which means what? No real solutions, which means the ball will not reach a height of thirty feet. Okay. How how else could you solve this? Oh, so it has three negatives, so it's going to be less than zero. Find the so it has no real oh. Yeah. Find the vertex. The vertex would give you the height. X equals negative B over 2A would be the vertex point. Substitute that in to the deal and do that. You could also look at the graphs. Y equals 30. And look at the graph of this and see if they intersect. They wouldn't. Okay. So it's not going to have any solutions. All right. Your homework is page 771. A through D, 1 through 3, 5 through 9, 13, 15, 18, 19, 21, 23 through 5, and 27. It's not a lot of problems. Okay.